here today to kind of continue this story of all these uh, ideas about atoms and molecules. We've been talking a lot about elements and how elements combine and those chemical formulas that are so important to the idea of chemistry. But today we're talking about something called a hierarchy, which is kind of like an order. And this is the hierarchy of solids. And it's really looking at models in chemistry and how elements arrange themselves. Because sometimes they can arrange themselves one way and then other times they'll arrange themselves differently. And the way that these combine to make these what we call extended structures is really important to understanding how solids are and what the structure of matter really is all about. There's a certain configuration that happens, which really gets back to our original question. What is the difference between graphite and a diamond if they're both made out of carbon? And this really gets down to what this lesson's about, and that is the arrangement of atoms. So today we look at three different substances. My, my first substance is salt. And you can see here, this is kind of a nice pink Himalayan salt. There's my salt. Our second substance is sugar. And this is a nice uh, Moreno sugar, actually from Mexico, really nice um, organic sugar. And then here is your typical sand that you got from the beaches in San Clemente. So we have salt, sugar, and sand. And what we want to do is we want to go inside of it and kind of really look deep inside these three substances. And to do this, I've brought along some models. So let's take a look at salt. Now salt's an interesting thing because it always goes in a particular shape. And each of the atoms, you'll notice that there are different atoms in this structure. This atom, each of the sodium and the chlorine, they get together and they form a certain shape. And this shape is repeated over and over and over again into what we call an extended structure. So for salt, that extended structure looks a lot like this and that each and every time it is making these crystals, it forms a certain way. And each of the atoms will configure and arrange themselves in this orderly manner. So here we have our salt. And again, it's sort of like these squares, very much into cubes. There's our salt. Now sugar's a little different. Sugar configures itself into a different way. Now it's still the repeating atoms are arranging themselves identical. They will arrange themselves over and over. So the carbon and the hydrogen and the oxygen will keep repeating themselves over and over again. And again, these extended structures will arrange themselves in a particular way. Now with sugar, it's almost like a square. When you see it under the microscope, it kind of looks like a square, but it's more rhombohedral in shape, in the geometric shape. So here we have our sugar, and there's our extended sugar, how those molecules get together and are arranged. Again, different atoms within that arrangement. Our last one is our repeating structure of sand. And again, you'll see some of those same things happening over and over. These atoms here are silicon and oxygen. And again, arranging themselves in repeated steps over and over again into these what we call extended structures. Our salt, our sugar, and our sand. So let's take a look at this idea of the hierarchy of solids and how matter gets together a little more. So if we have 
all of the atoms and let's pretend like these are all my atoms. And there's my atoms. I think I got one more little atom over here somewhere. And here's my atoms. And these are all individually from a certain element, right? There they are right there. There's my atoms. And these atoms, their next step is going into what we call a molecule. And the arrangement of that molecule really has a lot to do with um, the protons and the neutrons and that atomic number. So there we have our atoms. They shape themselves into a molecule. And there's our molecule. And we're going beyond that because now we're going into what's called an extended structure. And these molecules will go into a certain shape and a certain way. And those atoms and molecules will arrange themselves like this in nature, just like that. Now these, what we call these subunits. So we've gone from the atoms to the molecule to what we call a subunit. So the subunits, they get together, and then these subunits start repeating themselves over and over and over and over and over again, arranging themselves into exactly the same shape. So now we have those repeating subunits repeating over and over again, identically connecting arranging themselves, coming up with a certain configuration. The final thing that some atoms and molecules and subunits and repeating subunits do is what happens in nature is they start to crystallize. And this is really what a crystalline substance is, any kind of quartz or even a diamond. These are coming from what we know of as repeating subunits. And then you get these beautiful structures we call crystals. So what are the hierarchy of solids? We start with the atom. We go to the molecule. Then we go to the subunit and the repeating subunit and finally to our crystalline structures. So with this, let's go back to the idea of our graphite and diamonds. Each of these have a certain way to arrange themselves. Well, carbon can arrange itself very differently. It can arrange itself to look like graphite or it can rearrange itself in those repeating subunits to look like a diamond. So if you're taking a look at graphite, and here's what a diamond might look like, but if I were to take this apart and rearrange all of the carbon units because it's a pure substance, there's only one kind of atom here, I could arrange these atoms into graphite. So however those repeating subunits got together to make that crystal is really the difference between whether I got a valuable diamond or whether I just have plain old ordinary graphite. That's really what's the difference between a diamond and graphite. It is the way those atoms molecules, subunits, repeating subunits get together and arrange. And that really has to do a lot with the environment. So today we really answered our question, how can one substance be so different and yet the same element? Thank you so much for being here with me and figuring this out. Good job today and all of our questions have been answered about the hierarchy of solids in these models. Thank you so much. Bye now.